And we're live. What's up, everybody? Welcome, welcome to the second year of the show that we're calling it now, The Heart of Fantasy. I'm joined today with my co-host. What's up, man? Yeah, the first thing I'm going to say is we got an echo. All right, but I heard that good. Volume is going down, and we're good. I think audio checks out. Echo gone? Yes. Yes, sir. All right, let's go, baby. All right, now we can focus. Now we can lock in. The season's here. Uh, you guys just also, if you're with us, you saw a beautiful splash screen. Uh, that was shout out to our artist. And I'm, I'm going to have to give him the artist role on Twitch because you can do that. So shout out to, uh, to Con right there. Kind of hype. Uh, but yeah, all right. So person to send this to hold on Every, actually now that i'm doing everyone send it yeah everyone, you know rip it going to the dynasty league right now yep send it to everybody send it in the app if you can oh dang that's actually a good idea <laughs> yeah dynasty <laughs> draft recap show come join i guess while you're doing that Day. I get. We'll wait for the people to get in for the sponsor. You know the who the show's brought to. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. We'll we'll we'll, 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 we'll wait on that. Not everyone off in. But all right. So if you've been with us from last year, this was born from two leagues. We've got a dynasty league that we're in together, and we've got a keeper league that we're in together. Both what a decade long? Both ten years long? I would say Dynasty, probably eight. Okay. And that's going to be the focus of today's show anyway, is the, is the Dynasty. It's yeah. kind of – the fact that we're eight years in, it's just beautiful. Yeah, it's keeper league like much longer than that. I want to say, yeah, the keeper's yeah. got to be 15. I was, I was probably like 15, 14 years old when we started that. Damn. That's crazy. So, yeah. But anyway, me and you were just talking our start sits before – Sunday kickoff, always using each other for advice anyway. And we're like, dude, let's record this. This is the blast to talk about. Let's do that. Let's get other people involved. And that's what happened last year. We were pretty dang consistent. So we were consistent and we showed up every week. We did not have a good schedule. So uh, maybe we can work on that this year. We've got a lot of things to work on this year. <laughs> we didn't have a good schedule, but we did it a lot. But we did it. And we're back. And Drank Reynolds is with us, dude. We've got a VIP with us already. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> We got Drake Reynolds. Whoa. He's ready. He's he's hyped for year two. He's hyped for NFL Ooh. football. Let's go, baby. All right. I'd like to highlight not a great schedule last year, but we were there. We had a lot of fun. We gave a lot of good advice. I mean, I wish we we could we should have recapped the numbers. We should have went back. Well, we started hot. We were like four for five in our first we first hot. ever show. So, I mean, I think that might have been the only reason that we kept coming back. Like like golf, we were just chasing. Yeah, today we are focusing more on the dynasty, but the Yahoo is going to be fun to talk about. Yeah. And another great thing that we're bringing back from last year is just beautiful, beautiful NFL jerseys. Uh, and, and so we've got two gems today. Let's let's get that – let's not get that out of the way, but let's cover it because I'm actually – yeah, I think you have to start because mine is mine. Mine's got some serious emotional weight. <laughs> I think you should start because everyone's well, seen this one at least twice. I think you're right, and it might be the last one. It might be the last time ever. That's that's why. Really? So there was an announcement. Right, right, right. There was an announcement. Right. If that's the case, this is you're gonna retire that thing. Did you did you hear the news? Twenty nine, Duke Johnson, about five months ago, announced his retirement from the National Football League. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can't believe you didn't hear that. So we're we're expecting first ballot Hall of Famer, um, and and this shirt needs to go up in the rafters. So no, I I, I maybe thought that he retired a few years ago. Uh, give people give people a good. Oh no, he's been around, dude. He's been around. He's been around. I haven't heard much from Duke in a while. He. He made $2.3 million in his entire career, in an eight-year career. Uh, no way. And he only made 75% of that because the rest was taxed. So, so Duke, if you're, if you're out there, you're a multimillionaire, kind of, doing your thing, let me know if you need any 
money management advice. We can live off two million easy. So I mean, reach out. We'll we'll take you on the show, Duke. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, super fan might be hanging up the jersey because it's time for some new ones anyway. And I mean, we had to we had to we had to show some respect to one of the greatest fantasy football flex position players of all time. Third and twenty two, he was going to get you fifteen yards, two fantasy points, and then they were punting. He did it many times a game. <laughs> he was your favorite flex play, that's for sure. Oh, yeah. oh he was an RB two, RB yeah, never RB one. No, never RB one because I had my I had I had King Henry in most leagues, but you know. Yeah, and I was expecting him to get paid more. But honestly, uh, I me too. Honestly, if, if Duke reaches out and says he wants in on the show, I'll step off, and you guys can have it because that would be crazy. <laughs> We're doing an on field. Johnson podcast. Wow. But um, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. So what am I wearing? I mean, oh chill. Anyone, anyone in the chat could tell you what that is. I mean, and they wouldn't say eighty five. They'd say Ocho Cinco. Love I mean, it, dude. New thread too. This yeah, was, new thread. This wasn't in the closet last year. Well done. Now yeah, we got the the Reebok Vintage, you know. And we both got. We got AFC North going on. We both got orange going on. We got the white, white hats, hats going dude. on. I love it. We're looking like we're in uniform. <laughs> we are. We are. Cause we're. Yeah. Now, now it's time to say it. Um, since we're rolling. Brought to you by. Just gonna flash it. That's give it. Give it to us more center. Give it to us more center. I don't want the cops. This way. Yeah, we're rolling. This way. Oh, oh, oh. oh good. Oh, 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 man. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yep. Yeah, it's it's yeah. it's a lifestyle. You're right, it is. <laughs> I don't have much of a sponsor for you today, but uh Yeah, I'm not even gonna do it. Um I can but all right. you another one here. So opening show was really supposed to happen last night. So we're gonna combine two different show ideas. The first is going to be a recap of our dynasty draft, because we haven't even talked about that yet. Dynasty draft happened about five, six days ago, something like that. Just a three round draft, kind of quick. Three rounds, yeah. Yeah. But we've got some history in this because a big trade blew up in my face and worked out for you. So that's going to be, I don't know, fun is the right word to talk about. But I've got a new bandwagon team based on this draft. And I'm just, right. cool. I couldn't be more excited. So, yeah, I mean, let's just, let's dive in and start talking football. It's a learning experience for you. It could be a learning experience for the viewers. What not to do in Dynasty League. Well, I'm not going to say not. This isn't what not to do. This was just. It was still what to do and what to not to do. Um, yeah, I kind of felt like Bill Belichick making that move. I'll I'll explain it. Um, wow. It's a lesson I learned from a long time ago. Like we talked about, it's been a long time coming this league. Um, Steve, my own big brother, fleeced me pretty bad one time. Did a similar type situation as to what you and I are doing. Yeah. Yeah, I had my fun that one year. But um, Jonathan Taylor was picked with the first round or like one of the first picks by Steve with the first rounder I sent him and I vowed I'm going to get first rounders. I'm never sending them away again. Wow. Unless it's right. Okay. So, uh, yeah. Good for you. you did a little, and you so know, you took, little, you took my 2024 first rounder in the 2023 draft. So I traded up from like nine to three and packaged up a two-year-later first-round pick, you know? And I was just short-sighted. I was just kind of like, eh, is Lee going to be around in two more years? You know, like, <laughs> it was one of those moments. I believe we even did a pick swap, right? I got your second. I know that. Um, oh, you got my second pick, too? I got your second pick and the third. Yeah, it was just a pick swap. And I think... Pick swap. I, went, I went from three to nine. Yep. And then I traded you my second, and I got a future first out of it. Yep. All right. Kyle Ward, I know you're not in the league anymore, but if you're hearing this now, and you're all, you know what I mean? Oh, that's a terrible move. Oh, only Adam gets better. What's up with the Sarahs only trading with each other? (laughs) Out of here. Boom, Kyle Ward roasted. Boom. Not the the last time it's going to happen. Oh, and we got a first-time chatter. Big fan of the Jets. (laughs) <laughs> we got AJ too, man. Welcome, welcome, dude. This, 
you, you should be here with us. We, we've got a we've got a view set up for you. We uh, that's not the last time you're going to be seeing the jet. Other other chatters, um, and and yeah, it's it's not about it's not about the jets. We don't we're not, we don't like the jets on this on this show. At least at least me. I mean, I don't know. I've got zero ownership of all jets players, and I'm going to continue that. The jet can get back to us, but I want to ask him right now. Aaron Rodgers, do you think he's going to do it? A good question. The chat. We'll come back to it when you when you. It's a good question. Answer. He just went for a dollar in the auction draft that I did the other day. So. And everyone. Round eleven. In one of my round eleven. Uh, redraft leagues, yeah. Okay. I was targeting them. Okay, but hey, back to that, back to that draft that you know changed things here. So, I traded up. I got Drake London with a third overall. You got your boy George Pickens at nine. And so oh, I yeah. went back, and this, and now it's been two years. It's been two years. So I went back. I did the stats, and I was like, okay, hey, was this a good trade for me, right? Both years, George Pickens outperformed Drake London. So, kind of heated about that. So now I don't have a first round pick because, and you got the better player. So, so hats off to you. But I will say, Drake London has never had a real quarterback before. Just wait. Just wait. This year, that's going to turn around. I hope. And we'll see. Drake, Drake London was a in redraft like third, second, late second round pick. Dude, Kirk, Kirk can sling. So it's looking up. It's looking up for him. Yeah. Kirk can sling it. Um, can I say something though too? Hit me. George Pickens has his best quarterback thrown to him that he's had. Oh, dude, I don't know. I don't know. Well, maybe because Russ is going to be a Hall of Fame quarterback, but I just – yeah, okay, I guess you're right. I guess you're right. You know, you know, you know. hey, unlimited, he's going to – I think he's <laughs> – You're the only one that – you and him. You and him both are the only ones that call him unlimited. He's going to be on the bench, and Justin Fields is going to be – Clunking his way around the football field, and hey, we'll Jets, see. Jets saying both those QBs stink. <laughs> All right, let's bring some structure to it. You guys got the backstory. Let's get into the dynasty draft. If you're with us from the dynasty league, and you've got something to say, jump in on chat. I think I gave the guest. There's a new feature on Twitch that you can get. You can be a guest caller. So if you see that in the chat. Go ahead and give it a shot. Oh, I haven't done it. I haven't done the viewer call-ins. I'm going to open it up. Give it a shot. Get started. Only followers and subscribers, so please follow and subscribe if you want to call in. And all right, there it is. And if you call in, sure. no promises that it's technically going to work. New feature. We'll see. But all right. Screen two. All right, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look at this draft order, what we did here. Yep, right. here it is. So we're just going to get started. So we've got you in the – well, you know, let's just – all I did was record the screen while we were drafting. So I can just slide it like this, and we're going to see picks come in, all right? So, I don't know. I was trying to chat so much in the in the like actual draft chat, trying to, like, you know, comment on things, but it went pretty dang fast. But I'm going to say, like, the first three picks were, were kind of obvious. So, oh, dude, the Jets with us right now, too, and he, he was cleaning up with picks, too, right? He had – he had pick one and pick 12. All right. And so with one, we went Marvin Harrison. No surprise there. Um, no surprise. Ooh, hold on. My ears almost just broke. All right, muted that video. All right, Malik Neighbors, number two, to Doria. Cool. Like it, no surprise. Steve, a fantasy wild card. Actually, I think, yeah. comes through and does something normal here. Um, he did something normal, oh. and he did something that he wanted. I had some inside info. He he was he was hoping for Rome. Um, so Not go. bad, dude. I'll take that drop yeah, in a three. I'd rather Rome than, than Neighbors. He's a crazy receiving prospect, and he's got a great quarterback. I'll say it. I think Caleb Williams is going to be the man. Um, I just want to interject, too. This was uh, – I was live drafting um, down in Polar Park. <laughs> so that's true i'll take you through a little bit of my it was you know some people would say that's stressful and i thought i would be stressed i'm like god damn you know but the reception was fine the phone was cooking I, I checked right when i got there um not only that though great atmosphere at polar park i suggest everyone go down there smile the ball put the local seven dollar tickets go get some yeah, the, the, in, the, in the food's not expensive uh speaking of which i had three coney island dogs so I was feeling happy. During during the draft or before the draft? 
right before. Right before. Nice. Right. Okay. Yeah. 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 One little fact, anyone mi- listening, I, I I recommend we push the draft back for that specific reason only. I think it was a six forty five start, and I'm like, I'm gonna need a hot dog and a beer in me. <laughs> So I want to be in my seat, you know, yeah. maybe watch the name. And it was a good time. But anyways, yeah, Steve got his guy. Good to know. I think Rome. All right. So then we got, correct me if I'm wrong, is Marino, is he new to the league? Who's new to the league, right? He's new. He's new. He- yeah, all right, all right, all right. So, yeah, we got a newbie here. This is an eight-year dynasty. We got a newbie. We got two new people. Uh, they just did a draft. Yeah, dude, they, their teams ended up being stacked because they got to draft ideal teams between two teams that left. That worked out pretty well. And he comes out and and one of them what? One of them was stacked. Good. Yeah. Someone had Mahomes and I mean, just, a few other guys. Mahomes and Jalen Hurts, like they just got. Dude, I got. You wait till you see my team, but they 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 got a nice gift at quarterback. There was tons of good ones. But then I was surprised to see like they got great quarterbacks and he comes out and grabs Caleb Williams. I mean, I wasn't expecting that, honestly. Um. Do you think he was going to go that early, number four? Um, no, I mean, honestly, if you need a quarterback, sure. Hey, he didn't need a quarterback, though. That's what I was saying. But, all right. No, he didn't. No. No, he's, got, he's got either Hurts or Mahomes. I think, but. I think Caleb's a home run, so I don't even hate the pick. I get it. It's probably where people wouldn't be drafting him, but. Yeah. Go get your guy. You know what I mean? Maybe he's just he's a believer. And I, All right. I think it's a beast. But, yeah, I mean, definitely before his ADP. Speaking of before ADP, we're going to see what happens next year. Um, Brian Thomas. Yes. Um, I know nothing about this guy. So, if you've got a scoop, enlighten me. I got somewhat of a scoop. I mean, he was just – so, he's pretty much part of now, like, the second coming of LSU duo receivers, you know. Okay. And Jefferson. They put up – Honestly, got almost similar numbers with um, what's his name, Jaden Daniels, Heisman winner last year. Him and Neighbors were teammates. Brian Thomas. Uh, does that ring a bell at all to you? No, no, honestly. No. Keep rolling. Okay, so Brian Freeze. Thomas, I had him. I had him at the tail end of the first round mapped out. I wanted him with uh, with who I got. So I mean, I think it's a great pick by Manzo. I think, and you think just too. I mean, they just lost. What's his name? Ridley. They just lost. Ridley. Okay, yeah, yeah. You need someone to push the ball downfield, and that's what he does. All right, He's, I love uh, it. He had, like, crazy combine um, measurements as far as, like, everything from the 40 to, like, vertical, all that. Like, he was, you know, we saw, like, the sort of the web of uh, his profile on measurements. They were Damn, all right. Much all the way. He was – so, I mean – Guy's a freak athlete. I think I think it will translate in the NFL. I mean, why not? Leagues also change him. Yeah, yeah, hey, we'll see. And then uh, he's tall too. He's tall and is moving real quick. He's at least I want to say like six two, and is moving at like you know four three feet speed. So like, right. I love it. I think it's a great pick for Manzo. And I think he reached a little bit as far as where it'd say, but I I like him better than some of the guys that were drafted after for sure. All right, good to hear. I mean, not great to hear because Monzo's team's actually pretty good, but we actually heard too. Shout out on uh, Marino. He apparently took the veteran QBs in the expansion draft. So, oh no, Pete took Pete took the veteran QBs. This is from Jet on uh on the chat. Ah, okay. So, all right, cool. So Marino actually needed that. So things worked out well for him too. I don't know. We make it easy. We make it easy for the new people because somebody else came in new and they won the they won the championship almost right away. So. For some reason, I mean, I guess it's, it's nice of us, but we'll see. And then I also just got a, I also just got a text. Marino, Marino has Kirk. Ooh, okay. And guess what? He's got Kirk sitting on the bench. Hmm. Sick. All right. Can I say something? Already Hit a me. big fan of Marino. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but all right. I guess I got to do this reluctantly. My arch, en- my arch nemesis in this league just texted me and said, I think he texted the group. He wants a shout out for last year. So here it is. E Rob, congratulations on winning last year. No, 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 no. Okay. Let's E-Rob, keep moving. Let's keep moving. Let's keep moving. 
<laughs> yeah. But all right, all right. Pick six, pick six. We got Kamish, and he actually took it down to literally one second, and he might have auto drafted this. I literally, yeah. We just run this video for another second. Like I literally put in the in the in the team chat. I was just like, "Whoa, did you just auto draft?" He grabs. Is it Bowers? 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 Bowers. Yeah. All right. End. For his fourth tight end, he's got four start. He's got four startable tight ends, and he's going to be starting two uh, two tight ends on fantasy. I do it. So I've been trying to get a tight end because you should see mine. You, you guys, he has a laugh, but um, but all right. Anyway, don't know anything about. Maybe it's funny. I didn't do my research on any first rounders because I didn't need to. All right, Rob Powers is definitely again. Like this is a good draft. I mean, you, apparently you didn't do any research, but it sounds like you I, I did research the second and third round. Bandwagon, no matter on the guy you chose. And can I say something? I just remember this. This when I was when we were drafting, I thought of this. It was hilarious because I was explaining to someone that I know um, about kind of how this stuff works, and I was saying like, yeah, I mean, you, you do kind of like you know, if you know college football, you know, you, you know guys that you like. And I was like, some people just they get to the draft and they hear stuff, they just look stuff up or go on training camp. I was like, some people like Adam, they look at their highlights after they draft them and yeah. they get all hyped up. Yeah. <laughs> <And I> remember, <laughs> I remember specifically we're we're on the Google chat during the draft and you're like you don't even know who you just drafted so you look them up and you're watching highlights and you're like oh oh you know like yeah all excited. that was that was the dude that was the speedy receiver that uh went to went to jail what was he like drunk driving bro yes that's who I drafted and I was like I was, I was like yo this boy can cook I will say this. If I had not known who Henry Ruggs was, drafted him and then looked him up on YouTube. Oh, it was fun. Was it was fun. Like, yeah. yeah, we got a burner. Yeah, just right. wait. Yeah, right. same, same exact thing happened in this draft too. By the way, I was I was laughing to myself watching highlights of the two guys I drafted, and it was just like, yeah. it was amazing. Uh, all right. But all right, so Bowers went, and we got Gatsy. Yeah, he's, he's honest to God. I mean, he he is like an elite tight end prospect you know there's no doubt about that yeah i guess uh, we'll see that's what i know out of him i mean he was at georgia for a while so he's definitely known in the college football world yeah you know they won national championship twice i think but honestly no surprise there right because that was normal adp too i guess i'm just like searching yeah. for what went but, I mean, what I went not background. expected in this draft you know like that's what i'm curious about too so we know worthy he ended up going i think he's super overhyped i'm all longhorns too like I am, just just wait until you see my team. Like I'm fighting for as many Longhorns on my roster as possible. He's the one guy I'm not fighting for. Like I never thought he was a great wide receiver. I thought he was just fast. Like uh, you know, John Ross, right? He's the next John Ross. I kind of hope that's the case. I don't got him. I don't have him in anything. But I don't know. You show me one burnt. Show me one receiver that's worked out with Mahomes and the Chiefs. That's fast. Besides Tyreek Hill. Like it was Tyreek Hill. Then they bring in speed, and none of those guys do much. I don't know. John yeah, Ross didn't have Mahomes. Some people have that moderate success. I see you in chat. All right. Uh, he's back on the team now, or at least he was. Um, I forget his name, but some little speed so they had for a while. He was back there last year randomly. All right, well, he's another. Yeah, I know what you mean, though. You're right. But I was surprised with Rice last year. I didn't think Rashi Rice was going to be as good as he was. For playing with Patrick Mahomes, you might expect some receiver to be there in the top five at the end of the year. Wow. All right, we got Jet on the I'm chat. Yeah. That's true. And also, you can't call him for a half hour because he must have been a new follower. You can't. As a new follower, you got to wait 30 minutes. All right. <laughs> We'd love to have you, man. Come on in. Um, better, yeah, better. yeah, yeah. So, of course, Drag Reynolds, you can call in, dude. You're a VIP member, so you can call in anytime. Yeah, well, it doesn't mean we're going to pick up, but you can call. Wait, who said, did you say John Rouse played for Mahomes, or is he just making a point? That no, he said he didn't have Mahomes. That's why, you know, his career didn't turn out too well, apparently. Uh, um, I guess. Uh, you know what I mean? Maybe Worthy's worth it. I don't know. No pun intended. But, all right, let's see it. Let's see what happens. This is not me drafting. This is you drafting because you stole my pick because you took my pick, traded for it. And look what happens. Everybody knew it was going to happen. You get your boy. The Buffalo Bills continue to just – I mean, yeah. You just continue to stack Bills in Dynasty. 
for the people who are new, it's been a strategy that I've employed for ever since I had Josh Allen. Josh Allen is a live or die by the Bills. Live or die by the Bills. He's a touchdown machine. So you pair him with the guys that he's getting the double points with. <laughs> Where's the Bills jersey? Yeah. I don't know. I just pulled, oh, I, I just pulled wait. Crazy with that. Just wait. Open. Just wait. I, I don't think he's familiar with vacation Bills yet. Do you remember the vacation? <laughs> <laughs> because that was, that was next level. We've got... What was it, dude? You, oh, you were on a bye week in the playoffs or something? Oh, all right. Yeah, there's the Bills. That, that's, a, that's, that's disgusting that you just have it ready like that. That's not even your office. How do you have your Bills hat in there? <laughs> it's, just, it's just there, dude. It's, it's clipped to the waist at all times. Yeah. So I'll tell you what, though. Yes, I mean, for anyone who's new, I think I, I, I did start to explain it, actually. You just touchdown machine, you get Josh Allen's guys, you live off the Bills offense, and it's worked. It has worked pretty well. I mean, you've been dancing in the playoffs ever since. I can't, I can't blame you. Although we did make yeah, a tragic you, mistake. You, thinking, you want to hear my, my thinking behind the pick? Hit me. Yeah, yeah, hit, hit us. Rookie Keon yeah, Coleman. I'm also a State fan. So when I'm hearing the rumblings about, you know, they, they think they got their guy, they, and then they go ahead in the draft, and then they trade back, showing that they were specifically targeting Keon Coleman, that's a really good feeling. Is you're like, all right, I'm a Knowles fan. I watched this guy ball out last year for the Knowles. Yep. Now I'm getting excited because my team specifically targeted him to replace what has to be over, like, what? 150, 170 couple targets. Hundred, like a couple hundred targets? Between, Two, you know, 240 and, we just got in chat. 240 targets missing. So there it is. That Jet in the chat. Amazing. So I felt as though if I'm going to obviously keep rolling with that stack of whoever – Josh Allen has, I'm very, um, it, to me, it was a no-brainer. It, it, just like last year, if anyone was drafting Dalton Kincaid in the first round, it might as well be the guy who owns Josh Allen. Same thing with Keon Coleman. If you're drafting him in the first round, you might as well own Josh Allen. I thought it was a no-brainer pick. And it's just funny how it worked out, you know? It's, did you did you think he was going to slip to you? I, I think so, right? He wasn't projected I, top I 10. I confident right at eight. I, yeah. and I got a little It kind of worked out for you, huh? Tell you what, from um, just from even a couple months ago, he was getting picked at the end of the first round. Sometimes even first couple picks in the second round, and then okay. he yeah. kind of you know his, his draft where he was drafted, the team he was drafted to, obviously went into effect, and he right. was well, because you a little nervous. you also had the ten you have the ten pick right, so you could have taken yeah. him at ten and taken somebody else at eight. I guess you just had to see I what Pete Shore he was going for. Why, why not get your guy? Sure, I knew Kyle Ward was in the league, so I should have maybe held off another Noel guy. You know? But, okay, um, yeah. No, but you, you got to go get your guy. You got to go get your guy. I love that. Guy. Make sure you go get your guy. It was a no-brainer. I was proud of you. I helped you. A couple of picks. Because, like I said, I was I was hoping. I mean, I need a running back. I don't have any running backs as far as, like, top, you know, you start them every single week running backs yeah. on my team. And I was fully prepared to just draft two more receivers. Why the hell not? I've had to replace I was looking at Brian Thomas. I'm not gonna lie. I like him. I like a lot of the receivers that went. If he sli- if he slips to you, all right. Yep. So I'm kind of in no man's land. I'm thinking, and I might pull apart, but I think it worked out. We'll find out what happens here. Oh, that's a good pick. All right, and then Jonathan Brooks comes in, and there's there's the second Longhorn. Oh, it, I've been hunting this guy in every single draft. The Jet is actually the only one that seems to be hunting him with me. Uh, so me and him have him across. Three, we're in three leagues together, and I think he's on our roster in all three leagues that we're in together. I guess besides this one, right? Because sure, you got him. Well, I bet you, I bet you the Jet wanted him at twelve. We'll see who he goes with. But all right, I honestly don't know. He, dude, he's another guy that like he doesn't have much football under his belt. Like he didn't play all that much in college. He's super young. He like just turned twenty one. So that's it's probably good because he's a fresh body. But we'll see. That is true. Um, to me, so I was sweating a little bit. I'm on the clock here. Um, I was sweating a little bit before that, though, and I'm looking at either Jonathan Brooks. I'm looking at um, who I eventually go with. Uh, I'm looking at Blake Corum. Uh, uh, what's his name? There's another running back mixed in. but I mean, you'll see what I did. Trey Benson. Did I, did I, Hank, Hank did, Yeah. Did I expect to go into this? 
with who I got? No. Really? I really? Am, All right. I am going straight so, Mike Norvell, Florida State Pipeline, and you're about to see me draft Trey Benson. And um, I don't know. At that point, I was feeling like, you know what? It was going to be anyone. I mean, it. and here's the thing, too. I mean, he didn't have, like, a crazy workload in college either. I mean, he was definitely, like, a well-known – um, like college football player, I think people had higher expectations than like for production, but he's still like a four three guy, like two fifteen. So I mean, I feel like that at least translates to the NFL. I think you you work on him and you get him some work, he's gonna do something with it. Yeah. I think he's in a position in the Cardinals to even do it this year. Did you watch his preseason? Did you watch preseason tape? Did we? I, I, I watch I watch every snap of his dude. He I didn't expect to draft him, so no. He looked great. And as an owner of freaking James Conner, it's not looking good, right? Like I've had him for a while balling out in my dynasty league. Uh it's still his job to lose, obviously. I mean, if he plays well, he's a thousand yard rusher last year. If he stays healthy, he's still gonna command the backfield. But I was like, dude, Trey Benson just looks fast. He just looked I don't know. Some of these rookies, man, they can just run. They can just, like, they're going to bounce a 70-yard touchdown. Right, like, James Conner is not going to have anything over a 40-yard gain all season. Maybe a screen he can take for 40 yards one time. Trey Benson, I think, could take 40-plus yard carries a couple times. Um, Question for our hosts. Who is the QB coach for Kev's Florida State Seminoles? Um, Who's the QB coach? Florida State. Former um, Woo State grad? State. Um, is it former Woo State? Yeah. That dude's made it? What? Yates! <laughs> it, is, not Yates. No. it is not no. Yates. <laughs> it is not Yates. <laughs> he, he, almost, he, was, he almost got the job. He was, it was like him and the other guy neck and neck, and then they just, they unfortunately didn't go with Yates. <laughs> Good oh. answer, Colin. Good answer, answer, yeah. <laughs> Good answer from our yeah. VIP. Good answer. Good answer. New not artist. Mike. Not Mike. There it is. Worcester State College alum, Tony Tokar. He's the QB coach in freaking Florida State, dude. Guess what? He's got his hands full. I will say, we'll touch on this briefly. We got a show to run here. Florida State. What are we doing, man? Wait, with the coach or with, coach? with the player? <laughs> They're 0 2. So I will say this, though. Ooh. Unfortunately, I would rooting against them because this year, hey, once you lost to Georgia Tech, I was like, you know what, we are BC. And Boston College went down into Tallahassee. Kind of manhandled them. Damn. All right. All right. All right. Save yeah. that for the Saturday show. For the Saturday show, yeah. We talk NFL here, all right, guys? We don't worry about these guys until they get drafted. Then, we watch our highlights, and then we care about them. I guess, I guess maybe Texas, too, but. Uh, and get really happy. Oh, dude, I've been running. I've been running the video. But good, we got it. We got to make some progress here, anyway. Um, all right, so you grabbed Benson, like it. I honestly would have liked him. I mean, my first pick wasn't until two eight, so I wasn't getting him anyway. I was fine with it. And then D Max gets Jaden Daniels. I'm really high on Jaden Daniels. I'm starting him in a redraft league, week one. So I guess wish me luck, but he looks freaking awesome. He looked great. I mean, I don't know. Maybe I take too much too much stock in the preseason tape, but he just looked, he just looked awesome in preseason. Oh, and actually, dude, we got, we got a minute break. Every, our viewers are on an ad. So we've got a minute, 15 seconds. So we will just be back in a minute, 15. Let me give you that. I can see the chat here. Jet, the jet was, um was hoping for Jaden Daniels. Jaden Daniels went, to yes, Jaden Daniels, Derek Mack. I'm a, I'm gonna check out who Derek Mack has. I'm gonna say Team Derry Mack had a a run right last year. No. 
Yeah, yeah, that is true. All right, and we're back. Sorry for the ad, but thank you for the three cents that we just made while you watch that advertisement. At least three cents, three to five cents per ad, I think. So uh, keep going, and maybe we can, you know, get a coffee on the show. <laughs> no one's added to the swear jar yet. <laughs> yes, I was just thinking about the swear jar, dude. Um, and I think let's actually keep the swear jar, and then we can spend it on ourselves, right? We don't have to do it. We, we, I mean, like, we'll just. Let the viewers know what we spend it on. I think is all we got to do. I think since it's a swear jar, we I say we go ahead like Wounded Warrior Project something. We we donate that. I just don't. I don't know the right people to talk to. But I guess if if you do or anybody else knows out there, let me know. Donate. You know, I'll go cash donation. Easy. I guess I was nervous at first if like it would be hundreds of dollars, but I guess yeah, you know, we probably threw about a hundred each in a year of shows, so that's pretty good. All right, so the swear jar thing, really I, I like get, that idea. We really get swearing in the Rocket League tournaments. So really yeah, cool. right. It's gaming versus versus collabing on a show is a little bit different. But yeah, uh, let's see. Jet, call in. Call in. We'll see if we can hear you on the audio. If there's anything you can click to do it, do it now. Oh, still can't yet. All right, well, let us know when you can. All right, pulling it back up. So, oh, all right. So you were saying, how did you get this info? The jet was waiting for Jaden Daniels. He wanted him. How do you, how do you oh, know that? In the chat. Oh, he said in the chat. All right. Yep. Oh, and I reached out to you in the chat too. And I was like, we'll be in touch after you pick Trey Benson. Cause I kind of wanted him to slip so I can get him for the handcuff. But, um, all right. So J Daniels went to a team that really didn't need him. So that was upsetting. Um, and then E-Rob didn't have a pick, which is actually kind of nice. So great job. Great job, Jet, for taking um, taking E Rob's pick. We celebrate that all the time. Screw you, E Rob. Uh, but all right, Lad McConkey, love it. It's actually the name of another one of my redraft leagues. Were the McConkeys, so wow. <laughs> it's just a great yeah, name. No, yeah, not really. Honestly, I'm a I'm a Josh Palmer guy, so I kind of hope that he <laughs> doesn't do great. Uh, just a funny name. Well, you drafted him for that redraft. I did draft him in that. I mean, he's just he's gonna be riding fine. Um okay. because my, my boy Josh Palmer is going for his first thousand yard receiving year this year. All right. All right, All right and then we got Blake, Blake Corn. Blake Corn. Stop Bill. Yeah. All right. Yeah, he actually like... is an exciting player and I think he's gonna be scoring fantasy points in week one. Okay. They said he's the kick returner and R B two. But then they also got, what, Kieran Williams, right? He's the RB1. Kieran Williams is RB1 punt returner. Yeah, did you hear that? Both starting running backs are starting special teams return men. That, to me, is the stupidest thing I've ever heard, but who knows? Like, I mean, it's just like, what if he blows out his knee? So, so now I'm like, cool. It's, it's, I don't really owners aren't going to like this, but you're involved in Sean McVay's running back room. Be prepared for anything. <laughs> Apparently, dude. Be prepared dude. for Daryl Henderson to come back all of a sudden. And oh, jeez. You know? You're so, right. That running back room is absolutely unpredictable. Think, what I remember, the Jet was really um, – he seemed pretty – like, this is the guy. I mean, with, who was left. He seemed – because from what I remember, the, the clock hit, and – a couple seconds went by Blake Corp. I don't know if that's true. We could watch it right here. But I feel like he drafted him pretty quick. Okay. And he, he thought, it seemed to me like it was a no-brainer. Jet, was it a no-brainer? Apparently, he started as a returner last year. All right. Interesting. I just, I think as like a kick returner, the way they're doing kick returns, it's a bit of a safer play. I think a punt return is still a super dangerous play. He's going to get hit. He's going to try and spin out of it. And then the second guy is going to come in. And there goes your starting running back of the season. Like, I just – it seems odd. Um, but, and honestly, for anyone who drafted Corm, and so that was 
that's going to work out well because he's going to be starting eventually. I don't know. I got him in a couple of leagues. I like that pick. I'm just saying, who knows? He, he could. Kyron Williams burst on the scene last year. Who's to say that Blake Corum doesn't do it this year? I know injuries always bolt yeah. things like that. But yeah. in that specific offense, I could see it happen. Yeah. And we got Mitchell next. Scored a touchdown in the uh, preseason that I saw. Donnie Mitchell. I just am so nervous to have a receiver on the Colts because how often are they going to be throwing the football? Are they going to be like a 20-pass team like the Falcons were a couple of years ago? And in which case, it doesn't matter how good your receiver is. Drake London has a ceiling of 900 yards per game per year. Whoa. I don't know. Because I've got friggin', uh, oh, I, I we'll get to that because I had to drop one of my guys, Alec Pierce, who's going to be the wide receiver too. But he's going to get like, I don't know, 50 passes to him all season. You just can't trust him. Well, he picked a good year to get involved. Oh, in look at this, dude. Look at me. I'm, I'm looking up. I'm researching J.J. McCarthy. Mid-draft. <laughs> Trying to get the scoop right before. Rushing around. All right, we're back. I don't like him. You're like, he tore his ACL. Because <laughs> at this point, I have no idea what I'm doing. Um, no. I just didn't do much research here. Okay, Luke McCaffrey goes. Okay, here it is. I immediately texted Steve. I've talked to Steve since. I'm really disappointed with him for taking Luke McCaffrey. He was the guy I think I was going to pick just because, probably just because of the name, but also we've seen too many receivers like him come in and just do well if you know how to play the game. So I, I don't know. There's just something good. I got a good feeling I about mean, it. So maybe like a safe, a safe like floor type of player that you got to draft and you'd be like, I don't know, dude. Like, I, do you remember Cooper? Do you remember Cooper Cup's rookie year? Rookie year Cooper Cup. The first thing I remember him ever doing is diving on a loose fumble in the end zone and getting a touchdown. And I was just like, and then people started to notice him. And it was like, he's in the right place at the right time. He's not as fast as everybody, but he's just kind of doing good things. And I don't know. I'm just seeing, yeah, as I'm seeing McCaffrey similar to that. But maybe he's not that type of guy. I mean, I don't really know. I, I've been trying to watch as much practice tape as possible that I can get on like Snapchat and stuff. And I've watched a decent amount of him in practice, but, uh, yeah, actually, if you guys don't follow these NFL teams on Snap and check their Snap stories, you have to, especially during preseason yeah, next year. Like, I don't. They show you a lot of footage, a lot of Jameis Winston on there. Okay, which, what am I doing then? Yeah. I mean, there's a lot on Twitter, too, or on X that that, um, that you sent me, so I guess, I guess you're – yeah, I mean, anyway, we, we can't even bring up Jameis right now. We only have an hour until kickoff, so less than an hour, so that'll – we'll do our – We'll do another the show Browns, on that soon. Anyone in the Browns organization, if you're listening, make the move. Go, Jameis. You won't regret it. Um, yes. Ooh, okay. But, but all right, yeah. So, but no. I, the, Snapchat, it makes sense. I mean, you got you got guys on the field, you know what I mean? It makes right. Sense. Buzz around yeah. the phones on Snapchat. You're going to get some high-quality, like, deep access stuff that's not aired, I bet, right? Yeah. Oh, dude, and you're just seeing them practice, and, like, a lot of the times it'll just be, like, people on the sideline, and then all of a sudden, like, I mean, I was watching Cleveland's all day, and you just see Jameis Winston bomb, bomb, like, a, a deep post, and you're just like, nice, dude. Like, I, I don't know. I love watching that stuff, especially when I was just, you know, mid-summer trying to get ready for football. But, all right, yeah, so back to this. So Steve grabs Luke McCaffrey really early, dude. Nobody else is picking him here. Yeah. Yeah, he but he did it. He did, he did it because he's got no third-round pick. He's got just one and two, and so Steve was just crazy high on him. I guess it would be nice to have Steve on here and explain this. Why is he so high on him? I'm guessing it's just the name. I don't know. Steve's a busy guy. He's not caring too much. Uh, but, yeah, anyway, so so that was terrible. And then Drake May goes. Marino grabs two young quarterbacks, and apparently he needed it. So look at Marino playing us all, dude. Uh, good for you, man. I think Drake May – Looked awesome in the preseason. Did you watch preseason uh, New England at all? So, I did. So, I mean, he would, he would have, like, one good play and one atrocious play, one good play, one atrocious play, whatever. That's fine, rookie mistakes. But he just, like, it was so nice to see. Oh, hold on. Correction here. Drake May did not go to Marino. That was Doria's pick. I like, I like Jet on I the chat, dude. Say, but hit I me. was going to say, that's a bold move. But I liked how you were justifying that for him anyway. You were doing a good job of it. 
Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, like but, dude, so Drake May, so refreshing to like see, Drake. is movement in the pocket. Movement in the pocket was exceptional to me. I don't know what everybody else knows, but just compared to our guys last year, I was like, wow, we might actually be able to compete in a, in a, in a football game at the end when you have to step up or get sacked. He's going to probably do it. Like, I don't know. I was really encouraged to see that every time. Even if it wasn't a good throw or whatever, I was like, dude, good movement in the pocket. That's one. I mean, you hit it right in the head. Wow. I mean, we are used to a couple quarterbacks that have displayed some very ugly pocket presence over the last couple of years. Yeah, it's been bad. But all right, here, check That's this. Why anyone even moving around ever so successfully – you're like, wow. Yeah. It sticks out like a sore thumb. Yep. That's my one Mac. My none knock on Mac is he he looked like he was running around his head got off sometimes. He didn't know where well, he just, yeah. Pressure. Yeah. So yeah. He was, felt pressure and then he's like, I gotta run. I'm Mike Vick now. It's like, dude. It's disappointing anyway. Um wow. yeah, so Doria kind of cooked in this draft, dude. He's got he grabbed neighbors, Brooks and May. He re- he rehauled, yeah. He got a whole new skill. Dude, to and and Donnie Mitchell, he had four picks in the first, 50, you know, sixteen picks. Damn, that kind of went unnoticed. All right, good to know. I'm in a win now situation, dude. So that's fine. Stack your stack your rookies, winning the championship this year. <laughs> but all right, next pick. Don't know much about. I actually. So Doria also ended up. Okay, we'll find out. We'll see. We'll see. Keep going. I think I had to look up who this guy was, for so. So I didn't know nothing about this guy. Um. Let me see. Hold on. I can't see. There we go. So we got Monzo taking. Oh, Piersall. Yeah. Oh, Piersall. Um, very talented receiver. Out of Florida, drafted to San Francisco. A lot of people are getting excited, especially with what's his name holding out, but he ended up signing from San Fran. There, what's his name? Receiver. Ayuk. Yep. Nice. So, Random guess. That sucks. But not only that, if you're if you're owner of him, but then all of a sudden it comes out. This is like a few days ago, or even last week. Um, he got shot. Ricky Pearsall. Dude, I'm just saying this is coming in a chat as you speak. I don't yeah, know if you caught to, the jaw drop. Yeah, someone tried, yep, someone tried to rob him. What? So video, I see a video of him just walking into the ambulance. Got shot in the chest three days ago. Out of the hospital. Wow. Who was that? Brian Robinson last year? That show, yeah. Yeah, that, yeah. what is going on, man? Let's get these guys some protection immediately. Okay. Wow. Dude, I, honestly, the what did they even? Whoa. He took the gun and shot the guy that robbed him. Oh, oh boy. Okay. Oh boy. Oh boy. Man, so good pick though. Con, is that is that a is that an admit, admission of guilt? I, I think I think it might be. <laughs> I think we just find out who shot him. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, Yates is on his honeymoon, all right? He's got an alibi. All right? That's what you'd like to think. But, all right, let's keep moving. Jalen Wright. Yeah, yeah, I know. Dude, this, I was not expecting this. Cause we haven't got to my pick, which which we finally just got to, which is great. I was actually thinking Wright, but I kind of have a no Dolphins policy, a no Dolphins and no Jets policy in, in fantasy. So. Don't. Are you on the clock right now? That's me on the block, yeah, so get ready. Get ready for – I called him QB1 at the time, which probably is going to be the case four weeks in, but boom, Bo Nix. Bo Nix. Okay. And actually – what? Hit me. I'm, so now I see what you're saying. You probably got on the YouTube there, got all excited watching the Bo Nix highlights. And then, and then you, you see what happened with my third pick. Which I'm just gonna go ahead and fast forward to because we can, we can we can cover anything. Oh, hold on, hold on. Sorry, sorry, sorry. We've got your pick, so we'll we'll make. It. Um, oh, actually, before we even get to yours, right? So we got we got Leggett, 
who drew Mike Evans comparisons. This was the guy we talked about. I had my chance for him, and I start Bryce Young at quarterback. I'm a believer in Bryce Young. I know nobody else is, but just wait. I still don't see Leggett being being the guy. I think I think it's just if if Young's going to be successful, it's not 1,400 yards to a single receiver. It's just going to be good all around play, hitting tight ends relentlessly. Um, so I was not trying to go for that. And if there, and if I, have, I can't put all my eggs into that basket. I have an opinion on Leggett. I have him in another dynasty league. Um, okay, so I you went for him. him in the second round because he kind of fell to me. Yeah. Uh, was happy with the pick, though. I mean, it's a dynasty league, like we said. This is a guy who kind of sort of came into his own at the end of his college career anyway. So I, I mean, dude, drawing, exactly. why did why did he draw Mike Evans, Evans comparisons? Because if you watch Mike Evans, if you watch Mike Evans' college highlight reel, like he made Johnny football. Like he was the reason. I don't know. Like That's what they said, dude. Maybe it was just his size. Maybe that, like I have no idea. I watched his tape too, and I was just like, all right, waiting to get my next favorite player, and I didn't see it. So he's a big, anyway, he's a big physical receiver, and we'll see how that works yep. out for him. Yep. He's got a lot of development to do. He's Marino's really problem now. But all right, so now here is your third pick of the draft, second round. Yep. Um, I'll tell you what. Going into this, again, didn't it, didn't know who I wanted to draft, but knew I would benefit from having just any other running back on the roster, going out there, competing for reps, because that's what I need. I have a weak running back room, and we'll see. Um, I'll, I'll actually read it. Someone sent it into the keeper. Yeah, let's hear it. Let's yeah. hear it. <laughs> Quote. Yes, we, we got we got Trev. We got oh, that's right, yeah. Bucky Irving will be RB1 for the Bucks by the end of the year. We'd love to hear that. And we got head coach Todd Bowles. Head coach, not, not drank. We got head coach Todd Bowles. Said that Drank love the comment, though. Yes, thank you. Bucky Irving is the first player in the facility in the morning, day in and day out, roughly 5 to 6 a.m. End quote. End quote. Yeah, we'll take that guy every single time. Bucky huh. Irving, welcome to the squad. He has a legitimate, like Drank saying, he has a legitimate shot to take over the running back position for Tampa. I... Listen, I like um, – what's his name? I just blanked. Rashad White. Arizona. Rashad White. I didn't like him in college. Huge fan, dude. I think he's awesome. But he, to me, he's he's more of a change of pace type back. He's not a every down type back. That is for sure. In my league, in the NFL, that, he, his game does not transition to that. And I think there were some efficiency issues with him as well. Okay. With okay. The work that he was right. He got, he got a ton of work, and he held up, though. He had some durability. And this kid has any he can't even play game one of his rookie year. Irving. I don't He's first one in. Yeah. Yeah, dude, he's also he doesn't dude, five AM, dude, he's not practicing. He's not doing shit right now. So he's just bored. Might as well go in. You know, all these other guys need sleep because they've been on the field participating. I I don't know. I'm not seeing it. I'm not seeing it. So this is a similar thing, though. I just knew I needed a running back. I don't know much about Bucky Irving, but what I'm learning right now has me watching the highlight tape going. Damn. Woo! Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. shit. I'll Dude. throw it all over that, you know? You don't, need a, you don't need a running game when you got Kate Otten and Mike Evans, all right? So don't even worry about Bucks running backs, all right? Because <laughs> we're talking, we're talking 1,500 yards to Mike Evans, 1,200 to Kate I think, Otten. I think, I think that um, – Rashad White will still be serviceable <laughs> for a good part of the year because I think he will be the pass catcher on the team. But okay, all right. I, I like that. I like that. Yeah, game. there's actually some quote with, with Irving. I didn't even realize you got him when I read that earlier with D Mac bragging about it in, in keeper league. I didn't realize you had him in dynasty. So that's actually that's a nice little twist. Shout out D-Mac that in. That's the only shout out he gets. Oh, and there goes Polk. I think. And Marino grabbed him. How many drafts? How many draft picks did Marino have? Three so far. All right. Uh, Jalen Polk, dude. I think he might be all right. I mean, he looks good, but New England. The jet reminding you that Kate Auden was tight end eighty-eight. Yikes, dude. Well, tight end one at the end of the season. Plays like ninety-nine percent snap share. So. Look this now that we got someone fully endorsing Kate Auden out there. Then we'll we'll run it back at the end of the year when he's. You know. Just wait. This is getting recorded forever. So just wait. 
when everybody right. oh yeah I, everybody I, I, realizes I'm out, of the, I'm out of the i'm out of the race here i'm out of the race I'm out you're of done the all right so let's go my third rounder for raheem most yeah most start. and that was yeah and that was a ridiculous trade too i was kind of upset about that but so you went with bucky irving instead of frank gore your guy frank gore let me just for the audience kev's goat in fantasy i don't, I don't even know what to call him you're it's tough to say. He's like my Duke Johnson, you know. So it's it's just it's really tough to say. But your guy went to your team. Your guy's son went to your team, Buffalo Bills, and you didn't draft him. You just you just let him hang out there. What what were you thinking? What am I thinking? I can pick him up at any time. No one else sees a vision like I do. He's on the practice squad. All right. Yeah, and he's still out there, right? He's still out there. Yep. Oh. And I'll I'll tell you this to put to put everyone at ease because you're right. I mean that is strange. You should be rostered on my team. But I'll tell you this: <laughs> in another dynasty league, when he was still uh, not on the practice squad, he's still out there fighting for a position. He had the most rushing yards in preseason. By the way, I just want to put that out there. Shout out Frank Gore Jr. Um, I did I did um, pick him up at least. So I do have him rostered in my other dynasty league. I'm gonna have to make it soon. The same. One of their running backs will go down at an injury. Then you'll see him on my team. But, yeah. Don't worry. Frank Gore Jr., he'll be taken care of. All right. Good to hear. Good to hear. And I'm, I'm glad you, you spun on that because we got a call in. The Jets the Jets ready to join. Um, sending the invite now. Testing the new feature. Viewer Collins will show here. It popped up. I just sent invite. We've got a preview. We've got mic off, camera off. I'll have to do a little hacking around to get you in the camera, but I think your audio will be live if you want to say something. I can push you. I'm pushing you live. We have our first caller live. Say something. I hope he's in a jersey. We're not. We are not going to have the video because I've got to do some uh, some link copying and pasting to get the video. But if he's on video, I think I can make that happen. It just it'll just take me a minute. Uh, but we still don't hear anything yet. So if you're talking, I think I hear him. Hey, can you guys hear me? Yes. Let's go, dude. We've got a caller. Hey, long time listener, first time caller. Love the show, boys. Yes. <laughs> Uh, if you were if you were at the Yates wedding, you might re- you might recognize this voice. Um, the Jet proved himself as a great public speaker um, and a great master of ceremonies. True. Let's give a round of applause. It's a, it's a pl- pleasure to have you here. The uh, appreciate the mic sounds good. The voice is smooth. It sounds great. It sounds but, great. But yeah, dude, it. Wh- what can we start with now that now that we've got you here? Because I'm about to end my my third round pick. It's going to be beautiful. But let's recap something. What's on your mind out of everything we chatted about? What stands out to you most? Um, I was just going to provide a little bit more context in terms of the expansion draft. So talking to Pete and Marini, Pete came out guns blazing and was like, "I was going to basically take all of the veteran quarterbacks." and stud quarterbacks from Marini. And that was his game plan. Um, So he took Mahomes, Hertz, and Kyler, leaving him with, I think his best option was uh, Kirk Cousins, who's coming off of an injury, new place. Uh, So that's why Marini went with a rookie to start. That's why he went with Caleb Williams. I'll throw this in there too. Didn't they low-key draft, what's his name, and pretty high? The, the Falcons, a uh, replacement quarterback. Michael Panix Jr., yep. Yeah, that's also like, whoa. That's a very interesting situation to monitor because I was actually listening to a fantasy podcast the other day, like what happens if Kirk Cousins starts slow because of the injury? What if he's still affected by it? What if he does go down for a little bit and Penix looks good? Like, do you go back to Kirk Cousins? You just paid him a lot of money for a couple of years. Or do you roll with the kid because you just drafted him pretty high? So it's mm. going to be very interesting to play out. 
Um, so uh, I, I feel like they would lean with the Kirk because you're right. Someone's job is on the line for signing his ass. Yep. But that's that's not – we're talking fantasy ownership. It's not a great place to be in. For sure. So you're right. Great, great pick. And um, he's starting. I, he's starting in week one right now. He's got him plugged in, Caleb Williams, starting quarterback. Yeah. Respect. I mean, I mean, hey, he's I, got – if you're talking about a rookie quarterback coming into a good situation with offensive weapons, I mean, if you're looking at the skill positions, he's got weapons all around him. So we have a new coach there at the Bears? No, with uh, Eberflus, right? Eberflus, what, second nice. year? Nice. Yeah, dude, well, we're in a hot start. If you, got, if you got that, I wouldn't even try it. If you got that right, week one, dude, wait till week 17. <laughs> Only other thing I wanted to add, boys, so – um, before the expansion draft, it was literally minutes before the draft, it was going back and forth with Pete, uh, asking me what it would take to get the number one overall pick. He was really looking to start his team, bringing in Marvin Harrison Jr. Damn. Right. So I was like, it's going to, it would be a haul. Right. So what he was trying to do, this is before he even started drafting. He was like, what would it take? He was going to offer the fact that he was going to draft the fourth pick overall, which eventually went to Marini. So it right. was no one anyways, um, along with Garrett Wilson and a future first. And that was going to be the package, wow. the potential package. It didn't end up happening. For just the 1-1. One, one. For just the 1-1. One, one. So I would have walked away with an additional first, the fourth overall, Garrett Wilson. On and you, top of having the 12th pick and 201 in this draft. And you would have taken that, right? So did he just screw up his draft strategy? It's something I seriously would have considered. Um, would have taken that all day. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I think it'd be hard not to do that, right? You're getting somebody that's comparable day one, if not better, in Garrett Wilson, plus several picks. I think that makes a lot of sense. Garrett Wilson's still young tied to Aaron Rodgers. Um, so that was something that I was excited for, but it didn't end up happening. Damn. And, and Garrett Wilson's had success with a terrible quarterback. 100%. So a terrible quarterback play, we'll say, just overall. So, yeah. We'll... Dude, that's crazy to hear because also, so Gats was trying to get – oh, no, that was Pete, right? That was trying to get 1-1. One, one. Okay, okay, okay. So what was Pete's first pick then? He didn't have one in the draft. He didn't even have a first rounder. I mean, he didn't even have a single rookie draft. Oh no, he's got think, two third like rounders a, here at the third, end. Yeah, a couple thirds. Wow. Hey, I got some good news. I got some good news in the chat. That's why I was doing a little vink. When he got Baker. I think it's a wedding crashers move. Um, <laughs> pick up eight to eight forty. So. Oh. Ooh. Wait. Say that again. Uh, say that again. Eight forty. Eight forty because of lightning. Damn. This is dude. Wow. Wow, what a miracle, huh? Because we got we got a lot more content for you. All right, anyone else out there in the world that was ready for the Thursday night game? Come on in, we'll take you. Yep. Don't forget, <laughs> don't forget to subscribe. Leave That's a game. game show out there. <laughs> this is a good free game show. And we're gonna get to the start six. We're almost done here. My favorite part of this show was anytime anyone asked a lineup question. So get those line of questions in, please. Get them in. Yeah. Get them in. That was my favorite part. That was like the, you know, I felt like I was doing a service to the viewers. You know, that's when I felt like this wasn't just us babbling about our own stuff. I loved it. Thor is with us. The God of Thunder. We have a voice on here, too. Thor is with us. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. good night. It's uh, a good night. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so this draft i mean we can wrap it up can i say um i was i was considering ray davis up there was that doria who got him or something because i was i was yeah i was thinking you know just combined bills but yeah. for some reason i said you know i like bucky Irvin reading his little things so i'm like yeah yeah huh? i'm not gonna think of the bills and you already have about 45 percent of your team is bill so i get it not really anymore that was my chance to make to bring yeah. numbers back to that but i didn't and that's another reason why, unfortunately, I can't have Frank Gore. I think they made a mistake. Frank Gore had great success in my great success 
you have Grayson Smith <laughs> in, in the preseason. I feel like they're probably kicking themselves for drafting Ray. Very nice. <laughs> but no, dude, Frank Gore was a man in preseason. That that's the preseason I did watch. Okay. Okay. Well, wow. I didn't even see that. I think he had the most rushing yards in preseason. There's something about uh, yards after contact with him too. Damn. So, all right. I mean, all right. So I'm gonna go pick him up. I'm gonna go pick him up. No, I'm kidding, I, dude. I've got I've got some serious budget. I mean, some serious roster issues already. So, uh, but all right. So, Jet, are you with us? Are you with us? You got a you got a hard stop time? What's your? No, I'm still, I'm still with you. I was gonna say. I mean, when we get to like start sit and all that stuff. I mean, it, it's tough because this is the the one. Uh, question that I have this week, at least looking at my rosters for tonight, uh, but it's for this dynasty league, so you boys are not going to want to help me with the question. But well, I can always pose it in the chat for everybody later. We can wrap up the draft though. Don't let me. Uh, don't let me get us off. Yeah, I mean, I think talking. we're we're both done with the draft though, right? I mean, you uh, to um, yeah, I'm going to show you this last pick right now, and we got an ad break coming up in a minute and a half anyway, and then that'll be our transition. So, so here it is, man. It's on the board. I had two picks, a second and a third, and I walk out with Bo Nix, starting quarterback week one, throwing to his former college receiver, Troy Franklin, who I didn't know before this. When I drafted him, I don't even think I knew that they they were on the same team in college. It wasn't until I looked up Bo Nix's highlight that I was like, is that that who he's throwing to right now? And and he looks good. (laughs) So, dude, just a beautiful miracle pick. Although, although I will say, this bit me, I'm not going to say it because I don't want to spend a dollar, this bit me in the behind last year where I grabbed Bryce Young, Jonathan Mingo with high expectation. Uh, so hopefully sophomore success there. That's a new term that I'm going to be coining. No sophomore slump, I sophomore had, success. I had a little bit of the opposite. I drafted Pickens and then I drafted Pickett in the third round. Ooh, right, right, right. And that worked out decently well, I guess. It did because you yeah. had Pickens, but that was a first rounder. Yeah, it was the first round compared to a third. I don't round. think I took Bryce Young first round last year, did I? That but been... yeah, I mean that's I, I can tell you what for the way that you do it, and you get excited watching the highlights after the fact. What a what a surprise you have! You have no idea. I wanted to call everyone in the league, <laughs> and it was like a midnight. <laughs> like guys, guys, do you know what I just did? They'd all be like, "Yes, we knew exactly what you did the second you did it." And I'd be like, "Oh well, okay." But anyway, yeah. So let's let's hope for some uh, some Denver magic. Um, but all right, we'll be right back, and we're gonna start we're gonna start to transition to start sit right after this. All right, I'm grabbing a bev.
All right. We're back. We're transitioning. We've got start sits coming up for our Dynasty League. We've got NFL kickoff in, what, 30 minutes? We still got our caller, the Jet, online with us. Co-host is, is, is offline, but he'll be back. He'll be back, so we're just going to kick off. We're going to pull up the Jets team, and we're going to go through some start-sit decisions. And uh, feel free to come in, chime in, tell us what you think, ask questions of your own. We'll just be sharing this on screen, but, you know, we're down to transition to whatever. And, all right, oh, we let me find your team. Damn, did we do match up. Oh, this is actually this is dangerous territory, then. Let me find, yeah, I guess we might as well, in this view, can I see our backups? I can. Can the viewers see it? No. Hold on. Mm, that's not great either. All right, give me a second to get a good view up. Yeah. Team. Hey, here it is. Yeah, I was going to say, if you go down, you scroll past it. There you go. There we go. All right. Now we've got your lineup. All right, yeah, so take us through it. All right. Oh, perfect timing. All right, so I'm actually playing the Jet this week, and he's going to go through start sits for us right now. We're going to discuss some some things. Uh, so, you know, don't help him out too much because I need a win week one. I never get a win week one. Uh, but, no, let's go for it. Let's talk football here. Uh, I was going to say, I will set the stage in terms of uh, this team has been in the gutter for the last three <laughs> years um had several high picks in the last couple of years a couple of years back traded away some of our key pieces for first rounders second rounders things like that um had traded ezekiel elliott a couple of years back george kittle a couple of years back big trade last year traded Brees hall for debo samuel and two first rounders one of those first rounders turned out to be Lad McConkey this year. Um, so that trade still has yet to be seen what it completes as, but right now it was Brees Hall for Debo, Lad McConkey, and a first rounder next year. Damn. From the the current champ, E Rob, unfortunately. Um, so going through my team right now, I really wanted uh, Jaden Daniels to fall to 12. He unfortunately went at 11 in this year's draft because the only quarterback I have that's even serviceable is Anthony Richardson. So he'll be starting. Um, yeah, because you got Jason Hill or Sam Darnold. Okay. I picked up Sam Darnold this morning. Wow. Yeah, I, 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 almost picked him up. I almost picked him up this morning. Yeah, I replaced wow. him with uh, I replaced Mac Jones with Sam Darnold. That's what I did this morning. Okay. Jeez. Yeah, you needed Daniel. Damn. Yep. I really did. So um, running backs are good in the starting lineup. Bijan and and ETN, those are kind of no-brainers. Big help with the trade last year, bringing in Debo. Um, Pair that with Marvin Harrison Jr. Really like those two. And then Tank Dell as the wide receiver three. Yeah, I love Tank Dell. Feel pretty good about that five in terms of those running backs and those three receivers. Um, Tight end. I just spent, I think I put like nine or 10 fab dollars on. Yeah. I was surprised to see that. I was like, who's spending actual money on font or fat? Yeah. Outside of him. The only other tight end on my roster is Taysom Hill. So I needed him. Yeah. Okay. Um, I actually just heard about Taysom Hill today that apparently they're going to, they're going to strip his quarterback title. You're not going to be able to play him at quarterback anymore. Did you hear about that? Interesting. Interesting. So they apparently, kept them at quarterback on like their roster. Cause they only had three, they only had two other real quarterbacks. So like they were able to, and it was a, like the saints were able to call him quarterback and then get another person as a part of their 53, apparently quarterbacks of some special position. I, I didn't know this until I read it, but now they have that rookie who I forget his name, but he looks great and he's their QB three. So now Taysom Hill will be QB four. So there's no more value in calling him a quarterback on the roster. And now they're not, they're just calling him like, you know, tight end fullback wide receiver. So I think that's going to come to fantasy where you're not going to be able to play him at quarterback anymore. It just it hasn't happened yet, right? I read that about four hours ago. Yeah, not yet. I see him as just tight end on your screen, on my screen right now. I got him. I'm on the app right now, tight end and QB. Still. Okay, all right. So on the app, yeah. Trust the app. All right. All right, anyway. Yep. Keep going. So, so, yeah, moving into my, my flex spots, right? Yeah, I mean, so these are the right start now, sits. I, 
They're like, yeah, who yeah. are you putting here instead of? Yeah. I've got Lad McConkey. I think I'm I'm good with Curtis mm-hmm. Samuel there. Love um, Curtis Samuel. I think he's going to be a really good piece for them. We yeah, talked about I, we guys talked about it earlier with all those targets missing in, in Buffalo. He's that that Swiss Army knife that they're going to be able to use in a variety of different ways. Uh, I really like him there, so I don't mind him starting this week. Um, my real question comes down to Lad McConkey starting mm-hmm. this week, and then there's a plethora of others that you could consider, right? Um, Blake Corum, you don't yeah, want to start week one as a rookie, you know, same with Lad McConkey. It's just like, you don't know what to expect. Um, just came out for the chargers that JK Dobbins and Gus Edwards, their, their coach Harbaugh came out and said, they're going with a hot hand approach. So okay. hard to know, hard to trust who's going to get more work. Dobbins is more talented. We know that he kind of, yeah. Coming off an injury at the same time, he's been riddled with injuries his whole career. So who knows? <laughs> back off the way talented, way more talented than Gus Plus. Yeah. Gus Plus being so average Gus out there. Plus? Really yep. Yeah, well, we're a big fan of Gus Plus on this show. <laughs> we're big fans of Gus Plus. Yep. Yep. Wait, Gus Plus. I mean, they, that was. I'll say this though. It's uncharted waters for Gus Plus. Let's be real. Mm-hmm. We don't know what's going on over there in San Diego for him. Yep. Los yeah. Angeles. Los Angeles, Kev, you're dating yourself. <laughs> Come on, man. We need to we need to get the Gen Z viewers, dude. Come on. <laughs> They're like San Diego. <laughs> anyway, um, you're right. Isn't that a whale? He had a crazy touchdown streak last year. Gus Bus. Yeah, know, right. That, yeah, that was it. That again. That was a little ridiculous. Well, that was that, 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 that was Ravens, crazy. right? So you don't know. As it, I I have Gus Bus. It's just an elite team. Here, but, yeah. It's yeah. waters, but, but okay, so yeah, I can see why you wouldn't start Corum. Dobbins, I'm excited to probably start over McConkey, but okay, keep so going. Because the, so the there's someone else I see McConkey. that I'm like, I think you should start, but I don't want you to. Yeah, there's – so the last person I think that I would truly consider – I mean, you can consider Darnell Mooney. You could consider Wandale Robinson. Uh, the big one that I've been considering is Rashad Bateman. And he plays tonight, so I would have to get him in the lineup in the next eight minutes, right, to get him so in, which is – In Baltimore, it's um, him, obviously, Flowers, and – well, OBJ is not playing. I know that for a fact. Isaiah likely is going to be a huge piece this year. Mark my words. <laughs> so, so, yeah, so, says you. <laughs> what are we thinking about Bateman? Tell me tell me why would we, we would start Bateman. I have no – Honestly, I'm expecting a bit like I, I really liked him in college. Um, he's kind of been riddled with injuries the last couple of years, which has been unfortunate, but I like his talent a lot in that offense. If they're going to throw, which I don't think they're going to be able to rely on the run as heavily personally, Adam, cover your ears. I know you're a big Derrick Henry guy. I don't know. He's getting older. He's a big dude. I just, especially at the like the beginning of years, I don't know how much he's going to be like a guy that is going to truly get bell cow type numbers um, coming out the gate. So I think they're going to have to transition to a little bit more of a pass heavy approach. Well, coach is saying Justice Hill is going to be on the field a lot. Which, yeah, which is, which is interesting is, I mean, it makes sense if they are going to have to throw, right. You Derek Henry's not that guy. Yeah. He just isn't. So, um, I'd I'm expecting bigger it. things from Bateman, but I'm I'm still nervous okay. to start it. Okay, so here's here's the start sit, right? So we've got do we start well hold on, I gotta I gotta say who you who you should start, in my opinion. But don't do it. And actually, so like it seems like Bateman's already this game got delayed, but fantasy is locking in already. Is that is that what I'm seeing? Check your uh, out. I could I could still move him. Oh, you can still move them. Okay, so it's all right, cool. So if you heard that live, you guys can still you guys can still do this. Good. So this is worthwhile. But all right, so person that stands out to me, Darnell Mooney. And I know you said his name, but I'm just thinking yep. Kirk Cousins is starting, right? Yep. Kirk Cousins at his prime is not the kind of guy that just throws to one receiver. He throws to two receivers and he makes two receivers awesome. Thielen and Diggs. And so now I'm just seeing Drake London and that's all I was saying all offseason. And so I was just like, dude, Drake London and Darnell Mooney. Why not? 
So, I mean, I guess it's a stab in the dark, but if he's doing... Do you know why not? Second wide receiver things, then... Oh, yeah, hit, there's him, hit somebody, me. There's somebody else there. Who? Goes like, by the name of Kyle Pitts. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, we know Cousins will just pump a tight end. Kyle Pitts is not a true tight end. You ever watch his film? He is a he is a wide receiver that plays tight end. Okay, but so is is Pitts a must start tight end for you then? Yes. Wow. Okay, because you wouldn't have said that last year, but obviously quarterback situation changed. Hundred percent. Yeah. At also a different head coach. They're no longer sitting there just trying to run the ball, run the ball, run the ball. It's going to be a different approach from the Falcons this year. Um, I've actually, Adam, you'd be proud of me. I took Drake London in a variety of different drafts this year in my leagues. My man. All right, that, that makes up for your Derrick Henry comment. Yeah, for real. So so that's my – I mean, we can transition to you guys. Well, no, no, let's just let's, – let's finish it, right? So start sit, Lad McConkey, Mooney, Bateman, Dobbins. I start Mooney. Let's round table it. Well, can we, can we just do one thing, Adam? What is that um, cornerback versus receiver chart? Oh, um, yep. That's what I'll do. Glad you asked. Glad you asked. We've got a new one this year. Not enough time to go into all the details, but um, we are looking for – who, who are we looking for first, Kev? Oh, Bateman's right there under London. Yeah. All right, Bateman. We've got – the matchup is a zero, so it's a neutral matchup. And the advantage, as I was reading, is kind of like the, all the other corners' talent versus this receiver's talent. And so they're saying there's more talent on the field for D-backs than there is Bateman. Uh, so it's a, his his direct matchup is even, but then if he gets other coverage, the other coverage is going to be better than it, is what they're saying. Mm-hmm. All right, who else? Darnell Mooney. Negative matchup, negative advantage. All right, that doesn't look good. <laughs> similar numbers, though, very similar to Bateman. Um, oh, and McConkey. Oh, and then McConkey. McConkey. But we don't even know how many snaps he's going to play. Well, I guess we don't know anything because well, it's two C's, right? There he is. Okay, a plus zero one, so not a big advantage. But you can't even predict an advantage, so I won't even trust that because it's a rookie. Um, and then he's got a pretty terrible – he's just going up against a good defensive backfield, the LV Rams, right, Las Vegas? Raiders. Oh, Raiders, Raiders. All right, so they're saying – they're giving a lot of credit because 9-9, nine, nine, it looks like McConkie's got some of the best D-back talent out there. Eh, maybe not best, but. Wow, so all of those guys have tough matchups is what I'm hearing. Um, and then, of course, the other one was a running back, so tough to evaluate. Huh. All right. Kev, you've seen the numbers. And you were distracted. I saw you on your phone. I was distracted. I was just checking my lineup. But, uh, <laughs> I just wanted to bring this up, I mean, for the man himself. I mean, yeah. that was a good All right. All right, so AJ, after you've seen this, hit us. For me, no matter what. I mean, this is a tough decision for anyone. I mean – you go Dobbins if you just want to make sure. I think that he will get some touches. Yeah, that's what your the role is. Ten. Right? We're thinking ten touches. If you're looking for a high ceiling guy, then you might go receiver. I mean, he could, but also in the same breath, he, um, Dobbins could be a high ceiling play. Like let's say if he is the odd hand instantly. That's a. All right. So you're neutral. You you have a pick. Speak now. Yeah, you got you got to have a pick here. Pick one. One out of those four. I do. Um, I just want to see what AJ's matchup looks like here. And it looks like... Oh, the team he's playing against? It's a tough matchup. Yeah. It's a tough team matchup? Thanks. Oh, it's you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Jeez. So everything Adam has said is sabotage. Dude, you have... You, you can't start Curtis Samuel. That's for sure. No, he's he's gonna go off. Start. He's 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 a hundred and a touchdown waiting to happen. I'm not I'm not happy that I'm playing against him. Honestly, AJ, I I hold out here. I go with the safe play. I don't I don't have a decision for you. I have that. I have you go for the safe play. You go for someone who's gonna have the safest floor for you. You're in a, you're gonna be in a dog fight with Dean Gaza. I just looked at that matchup. That's my advice yep. to you. And so, that means and that means Dobbins. Who does that mean? Yeah, I'm just going Dobbins. I'm going Dobbins. All right, going Dobbins. Mark it down. We'll, 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 we will revisit that one, and we'll see. All right. And then, I mean, yeah, Jet, you can tell us by just showing us who you start, or you can tell us now who you're going with your call. 
Yeah, I mean, I think so. I've come to the conclusion I'm going to wait on um, not starting Bateman. So that's going to buy me a couple days because the rest of the matchups are yeah. Sundays. Yeah, cool. Um, so I'm going to sit on that a little bit. See if somebody gets shot. Yeah, something like that. You know, something. <laughs> see if there's any coach speak that comes out in the next 48 okay. hours. Okay, yeah, yeah. Smart move. That's a, that's a veteran fantasy play right there. Um, all right, all right, well done. So we got we got to start sit on – Let's see on chat that we can visit. So, Con, if you're still there, we're ready for you. Thanks for being patient. So we need to start two. Pittman, Metcalf, Flowers. We're going to the data. We're going to the sheet. I'm going to go right to the data. Yeah, just go right to it. Because, I mean, we might see something right here for DK, for example. We're like, wait. Yeah. Well, we're already seeing something from Pittman. So he's got uh, Stingley Jr., which I don't know much about. I mean, I like this because you get to know the, the corner's names a bit more as we go week over week. We'll see. But he's apparently a decent matchup. So the matchup head on isn't great. But apparently they've got no other corners because the rest of the advantage really goes to Pittman. Uh, so that's interesting. So Pittman's looking decent if he's not one on one coverage with their top corner. Um, so I'm guessing he might be. Oh, and there's a cool feature on this too that they've got the blue. You guys see as I'm scrolling, there's some blue here. Yep. Um, that means projected shadow situations. Oh, I was going to say, I was curious who was going to. So, there are okay. corners that. Here's Metcalf. All right, so Metcalf's a part of it, right? So they're predicting uh, Sertain to be shadowing Metcalf. And that sucks because I've got Metcalf. Um, and he's got, paid. he's got what? Four, just got paid four year extension, big mm. money, like 85, 90 mil, something like that. Okay. Um, okay, on. so uh, if, if they can get uh, him to not shadow him, Metcalf's got a. Go ahead. We have someone in chat saying they can't see the screen here. Thank you. Good catch. All right. All right, we're back. You guys can see the screen now. Not our big faces. All right. So, as you can you can see blue, right? So, we got Metcalf. We've got minus 15 on the matchup, which is bad. And he's going to be shadowing. So, that's probably the more important number to look at. But if we can get Metcalf off of that matchup. I don't know. Metcalf, and you just... I just heard a, I just read up a little bit that apparently, what Harbaugh's coaching there now? Who's who's coaching in Seattle? Oh, who is in Seattle? Seattle coach? Um, I thought I read that it was was it the other Harbaugh? I don't know. No, Harbaugh's in um, L.A. with the Chargers. Oh, okay. Well, all right. Anyway, they just said that they're going to be a run heavy team, and Metcalf apparently had a fit about that in the preseason, and they had to sit down with him and be like, "No, this is a good thing for you." We're a run-heavy team, but you're going to get your big plays, right? So it's just like, ah, don't love hearing that from a P, you know, you know, PPR perspective, but I'll take a 70-yard touchdown from Metcalf if they force everyone to pack the box. But anyway, this doesn't look like a great matchup. Here's a head coach that you've never heard of before, Mike McDonald, the head coach of the Mike Seattle McDonald. Seahawks. Spent the last, like, 10 years with the, uh, with the Ravens, I believe. He was their D coordinator the last couple of years. Okay, okay. Good, good fact. And then we got Zay Flowers playing tonight. Well, I was going to say, if if you wanted to start him, hopefully you already had him in your lineup because lineups have since locked. Lineups have like, locked. Well, you, yep. they, said, they said the game was 840. Yeah, but yeah. you know how apps are. They, they're mm. not quick to update there. Okay. All right. Well, Zay Flowers has an advantage on the other corners, but not on the one covering him. But Zay Flowers... Does he run the slot? Was he running slot a lot last year? Yeah, they move him around. Yeah, so I don't think that matches up. So I would go Zay Flowers here. Hopefully you had him in there already, Con. I'm sorry for the wait. <laughs> yeah. We'll, work, we'll work on our timing. Yeah. My sense there, too, especially with me considering Rashad Bateman, what I'm nervous about is these two prolific offenses going at it tonight, a high-scoring game. Yeah. That would bother me because I didn't start Bateman. Um, but at the end of the day, it is week one, right? And if you've ever played football before, you know that the defense always is clicking a little bit earlier in the season, the post Thank offense. You. Thank you. I just listened to a, I was listening to a yeah. fantasy podcast two days ago, and they said the exact opposite thing. They're like, week one, you know the offense is ready and the defenses aren't. And I'm sitting there like, dude, not at all. <laughs> the, the defense is ready to fly around with way less, I don't know if it's less reads, but less options. Yeah, like, 
defense has the total advantage in week one. So thank you for saying 100%. that. Okay. 100%. Beautiful. All right. So we go, I go Zay Flowers here. You guys, what do you, what do you think? Yep. I agree, but it's too late. <laughs> oh, we, we got to start too. We got to start too. So I'm going oh. DK. I'm going DK and Zay Flowers, which means I'm sitting Pittman. I like Pittman. What was his matchup though? He's not being shadowed at least. No, he's not being shadowed. But they might not pass more than twenty times. They're gonna be playing Houston, I'm pretty sure, right? So they're gonna be throwing. Yep. I'm 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 sure their game plan is not to throw over twenty to twenty five times a game. I don't know, maybe I'm wrong with that quarterback, but All right. What do you guys say? Throw it out there. Okay, he's going 70-yard touchdown. Yes, sir, my guy. All right, so we're sitting, we're sitting, Pittman. Jet, your two cents. Yep. Um, right back. You take the next uh, start set, Adam. I don't. I would probably sit Flowers. Personally, it's pretty close between Flowers and Pittman. I'm definitely starting DK. Okay, um, nice. And then I probably have Pittman a couple spots higher, so I'm looking at. Um, fantasy pros right now, their rankings. Um, DK is for this week, for week one, uh, 17th ranked wide receiver. Pittman's at 27, and Flowers is at 31. Wow. So, okay. Um, so Pittman and Flowers, pretty close. Uh, so probably a toss up there, whatever you want. But um, yeah, I think I would probably sit Flowers. All right. Good to hear. Colin, you got the info. It's too late to do anything with it. We apologize. Let us know who'd you start. If it already locked in, who'd you start? Um, but all right, let's transition. Going to Team Kaizen. Oh, yeah, it is locked in. Look at this. Derrick Henry's locked. Beautiful. All right, which means I can't swap likely into my tight end spot, which is a good thing. Uh, I'll definitely take that. But all right, so until Kevin gets back, you're with me here. Wide receivers, not too... I'm just I'm a wide receiver heavy team, so it's going to be really running back since my start sit here. I've got Puka, Drake London, Mike Evans, Diggs, and Metcalf. I think I think Diggs is the uncertainty because we just don't know. But I'm just such a believer in freaking Houston's offense. Big thing I heard about Diggs too, right? He's been a prima donna in previous years, right? Starting to become a distraction in certain places. He is on a one-year deal. Ooh, what that what that means? He needs to be on his best behavior. Okay. So to start the year, I think he'll be fine. I mean, it typically happens as you get later in the year, you start not getting targets. There's other guys there, Yeah. right? Things go south. He might start to get hot-headed like he has shown in the past. He has to, like, his internal camp has to keep him sane because he's on a one-year deal. Like, he can't continue to have outbursts. It's a contract year for him. He's got to be thinking about his next contract. So he needs to be on his best behavior. Okay. Now, I think that bodes well for you. I guess, but also, all right, hear me out on this, because I noticed this in Buffalo. He does not play as many snaps as other receivers. He never really has. I mean, maybe yeah. when he was super young. Like, there's a lot of times, like, big third down, third and 12 for the Bills, and Diggs is on the sideline. And I'm just like, what is going on? Like, <laughs> for fantasy purposes, he's going to catch a pass to third and 16. But for the team purposes, like, how is he not on the field there? He just takes – I don't know. I got this. I feel like this is the case. I don't know if it's just because i got ownership of him. But it seems like he takes plays off, and it's like a planned thing to keep him healthy maybe. And that's the only concern for me is I'm like, if he's going to be playing 60% of the snaps versus Nico Collins and who's their other guy? Who else? Uh, Tank Dell. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. you know, like, that's concerning for me. It's just like he's going to have less opportunities to eat. But then if he's out there and he's getting targets like he does – like he did in Buffalo, I'm good. But – that's yeah, that's interesting. But I mean, he's also you guys. If you don't know me, you will, and you that do know me, I I care way more about about my guys than really how they're going to perform. So I mean, he's he's earned the right to start this week one, no matter what. So anyway, what a, what a bar, what a bar that was just dropped. If you don't know me, you will know me. <laughs> just keep coming back. We don't know what day of the week this is going to happen, but it's going to happen every week. Um. So I'm starting him over. I do have some other decent receivers, 
Joshua Palmer is a starter. Like, he should get targets. I don't know who else. Labaconky shouldn't get 15 targets week one as a rookie. I wouldn't hope. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Uh, and I guess that's really it for receivers. Um, yeah, everybody Rashid else is Shahid. a... Rashid Shahid. Yeah, a okay, yeah. But he's been dealing with... They said he's healthy, though, so I guess we got to go with that. But anyway, yeah, I mean, we're not here to he talk... Wouldn't. He wouldn't start on your team, but yeah, yeah. what do you got for running back? But yeah, so those are five receivers starting, which means flex isn't even really a consideration. I've got two running backs, Derrick Henry, James Conner. So definitely starting Derrick Henry. I don't care what the haters say. I will always start him until he gets hurt or retires. And I do that because I benched him in the playoffs when he scored 63 points in one week. So <laughs> I'll never get over that. And I lost that playoff week. So anyway. So, it's James Conner. So, starts it. James Conner, Ramondre Stevenson, Tony Pollard. Go. Ooh. Interesting. Very yeah. interesting. Oh, yeah. Because in a lot of leagues, I've got Stevenson and James Conner as my two running backs. <laughs> and so, like, I'm starting Stevenson happily, happily in other leagues. And now I'm just sitting here yeah. like. I think it's, I personally, I think it's a no-brainer that it's James Conner. That makes me feel good. Against the Bills, right? Yep. Yep against Buffalo, yep. I On the road. It's a brainer. I'm going James Conner. It's a brainer or a no-brainer? I'm thinking of it. It's not a no-brainer, but I will go with Conner. I have to think about it. Okay. So, all right. So, now start sit Tony Pollard-Stevenson just to get your opinion. So, big thing for me, the New England Patriots offensive line is going to be one of the worst, if not the worst offensive <laughs> line in the NFL this year. Yes. Agree. Okay. Uh, we have a quarterback that is not going to push the ball down the field, at least right now without Drake, Drake May starting. Uh, that means you're going to see loaded boxes, knowing that the talent of Ramondre Stevenson is one of the better talents on that side. Very hard to have a successful run game when they stuff the box and they will challenge you to throw the ball. Um, so I'm very concerned with Ramondre this year overall having a really good year. I think he'll give you volume. So he's always going to be a safe play. Yeah, give me five or six points on a bad day. Yes. Um, but I'm nervous about him showing out consistently. And that's where, like, I'm very high on the Arizona Cardinals this year. Kyler Murray is in the MVP conversation for me this year. So James Conner is going to be a, a catalyst for that offense. Yep. He's going to score touchdowns. He's going to score a lot of rushing touchdowns for that team. Um, I heard other people making, yeah, Dark Horse or MVP is is freaking – Kyler. Yeah, Kyler. And I I don't see it. And I remember you making that call like three years ago, and it just didn't happen. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why people are so high on him, but I guess we'll see. Um, Tony Pollard's very interesting, right, coming off of kind of a down year in a new place now. Um, a lot they, of talk about IJ Spears. Being they said it's going to be 50-50 is, is what yeah. Coach is calling it right now. Yeah. So I think I would probably put Stevenson over him week one Yeah. because I just want to see how that's going to shake out yep. with Pollard. Yeah, I think Stevenson will get more touches. But honestly, like I think the 50-50 split works for some backs. I think it's going to work. Sure. Tony Pollard was better with Zeke than he was without him. And then I always Man. go back to Devonta Freeman and his running mate on Atlanta. And you always had that guy. I forget his name now. But the 50-50 split works so well for them as running back. Kevin Coleman, baby. Kevin Coleman, yeah, dude. T. Cole, that's um, right. The biggest thing that I don't understand why you don't hear more about in fantasy circles, all these I, – I listen to a bunch of fantasy podcasts, all this and that. The NFL game has changed. There are no longer the bell cow running backs. There are a few. There are a small handful left. Yep. But people understand – the fact that you can bring in rookie running backs that are ready to go. You don't have to pay running backs anymore. They don't pay them on their second contracts. So you continue to recycle in new running backs in terms of draft picks, whether they be second, third, fourth, fifth rounders that you can utilize. So you're seeing more of a committee at the running back position now more than ever. So I just haven't seen the fantasy community adopt that yet but you're going to see a lot more of those 50-50, 60-40 splits than you typically have in the past. Okay. Like that bell cow running back is no longer a thing in the NFL. Huh. Yeah. 
Who's Pollard playing? Pollard is going up against uh, Chicago. Chicago. But all right, hey, we are running short on time. We've got six minutes until kickoff, allegedly, right? Any more updates? I got to run through my lineup. Yeah, let's do it. So give us, yeah, like. The guy's playing is uh, Mark Andrews. So I'll start that off the bat. I'll tell you that I'm also starting two tight ends. Wow. The Dalton Cade stack with Josh Allen. Yep. Yep. I like wow. that. Wow. I'm uh, breaking a rule. Whoa. Change it for some reason. Hold on. Hold on. I just got an update right now. It says, not an update, but look at my screen. Mark Andrews says he's on a buy. On a buy? Did we have an update on this game? Okay. App looks a little different. All right. Technical difficulty. Sorry, I derailed you. Keep moving. Let's pretend he's not on a buy. Uh, yeah. It, it it makes sense with Dalton Kincaid stacking with Josh Allen. You know, 100%. Yeah. I mean, what? For sure. Like, I don't know how many targets he'll average close to double digits, I'm assuming. He should be a tight end one in my eyes, dude. Who else is he throwing to? Really good. Um, I'll tell you what. I mean, Keon Coleman, I'm stacking it. Whatever. We starting. Can. Starting rookie. Fully, first pick. We're fully invested. I mean, might as well go for it. Where is the game. Bills jersey? <laughs> you have one. Oh, okay. Yeah. That that makes four. We've got four Bills starting with the defense yeah, included. Defense. <laughs> oh, this is normal. This is uh, this is what we expect. It's four guaranteed Bills, and then it's usually a fifth sometimes. <laughs> I think this this week one, I mean, it's, it's, it's still where to go on my team with – a limited running back room, we're going to go Raheem must start. Yep, I like that. We got to think about that. I mean, until it's taken away from him, yep. he's shown that he's the guy getting the touchdowns. So Couldn't you know, agree more. Couldn't agree more. So you've got really uh, one – you've got one question here. You've got Zach Moss. Yeah. Who is he starting uh, over? Is it Zach? Well, I don't even know if he's, like, starting or what Zach their Moss. whole plan yeah. is. But they have another young guy, Chase Brown, to go off what AJ's saying. They'll bring in guys and give them a pretty – like a specialty guy, and they'll step into a role right away. Don't know if that turns into him being the more productive back. I don't know. But, I mean, look at my bench. Who else am I going to start? Right now, those two, Kev, at the same time, looking at Fantasy Pros rankings for this week, the running backs, Zach Moss at 33, Chase Brown at 34. See, so, to dude, give me Gus that, Edwards. Gus Edwards, what is he? Yeah, so Gus Edwards – He's what, I mean, RB25 probably? Situation earlier. What? He's got to be the highest ranked running. Like, I think it's a no-brainer you're starting Gus Edwards what, over. What did Harbaugh just say? They're just going with a hot end. Oh, Gus okay. At 30. So oh, he's at 30. Uh, well, 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 well. It's a tough decision. I mean, I'll ask what you guys think. But I, I I'm still going Gus Edwards. I would. So, I think it comes down to the matchup. Right, so Gus has the Raiders at home, where Moss has New England uh-huh. at home. Um, New England is without Christian Barmore, so Run D is definitely going to be hurting. Um, obviously, we just traded uh, Judon as well. Wasn't, mm, wasn't yep. huge contributor in the run game but still I mean another decent part of that defense the thing is New England's defense is always pretty stout right I don't care who the names are like you you typically don't put up a lot of points on the New England Patriots so no you don't the the game will like someone was talking about it like don't expect a high scoring game even with the Bengals in week one here and at the same time Kev I mean I personally I think I would go I would lean Zach Moss because in week one you're not going to see a rookie running back, Chase Brown, right? He's Is he a rookie or is he second year? Second year. Second year. Yeah, okay. So disregard what I was going to say. <laughs> Chase Brown, I, yeah. Uh, I do like Zach Moss, though. I mean, he, he obviously showed a lot last year, right? He showed he's capable when he has a workload. Um, so I that's think he's going to be – That's why I run a roll with him. I think he could, even against the Patriots, I mean, they'll be hopefully just running the ball still all game. Yep. No reason to give up on the run. I feel like if that, it, in the same breath as it's going to be low scoring, he could be the one with like one of the touchdowns. You know. I yep. Don't know. Gus, All right. Gus Edwards. It's um, tricky. I like Gus. 
Um, but hot hand is just a scary word. Yep. Yeah, especially that you know Dobbins is just like, and, and you know Gus Edwards knows that Dobbins is more talented than him. Like, I just, I would do Gus Edwards still, but it's literally because I know nothing about the Bengals situation. I just feel like I don't want to touch that. And a reminder, I mean, week one is a is a really big feel out week, right? Like a lot of us don't know exactly how everything's going to shake out. This is a, a big week to just kind of figure all that out. So right. But all right, so this is going to recap it. It's eight forty. We're ready for some football. Um, recap it. This is going to end. This is going to end this. So I got to leave you guys with two things. One is next week I want to talk about one fantasy analyst that you would listen to over everybody else. So that's going to be part of it because I've got, I think I'm leaning towards Andy Behrens, if that's how you pronounce it, the Yahoo guy. And I want to start using him to help, but I want to know who you guys trust out there. And then I got, I got recommendations too. I'll, 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 uh, I'll definitely chime in on that one. Nice. Okay, cool. And then I'm thinking X, I'm thinking we got to go to X. We need some way for people to message us when we're not here so that we can come back and answer user feedback. Um, so so if you support that, you know, let me know. Anybody else that's that's still listening, you probably have my number. Text us. You're we're gonna, we're gonna, Twitter. yeah, X Twitter. Twitter. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's a good idea. So all right, cool. So you're gonna see us. Uh, we'll start we'll start pushing our our X account, and uh, we'll, it'll be a good way for you guys to reach us, so we can we can come here with a bit more of a of a plan. But all right, man, week one ready. Well done. This is uh. This is exciting. We actually we, we, we did what we said we were going to do at the end of last year, which was to come back for year two. Thank you, the Jet, for coming in here, being our, our third co-host. So we're Thank excited to have you back next week. And now that now that people are used to your voice, maybe we get a new caller next week too. I don't trust everybody that I saw in the chat today, but <laughs> got, it's all right. Who's winning tonight? I'm going to take the – Predictions. Ravens. Everything, everything in me believes that the Ravens should win, but something's telling me the Chiefs are winning. Go ahead, touchdown in the fourth quarter to win it, Ravens. That's what I want to see, so that's what I'm going to say. Isaiah Pacheco is going to have a big night. Chiefs, Ooh. Chiefs roll. Ooh. Ooh. I heard, I heard good things for Pacheco this year. Nice. All right. Good prediction. In yours? I, I'm going with Chiefs. You're going Chiefs. All right. Damn, if I was good, I could have these things pop up right underneath you. You'd have a nice stamp Chiefs over you. I'd be Chiefs. I'd be, I'd be Ravens. All right. yeah, wild, so... predi- wild prediction as well. Samaj P. Ryan scores a touchdown tonight. Receiving Whoa. touchdown. Whoa. Hate that prediction, but good one. Really? That's a, that's a crazy one. A lot of people are going to be shocked by that. Because what? Clyde edwards Hilaire ain't playing? Yeah, he's on the pup list, I believe. So he's out four Ooh. weeks. Okay. They just got him from Denver or something crazy. But uh, yep. good luck to you. Um, CJ Mack, and see you in the midnight tournament. Woo-hoo! All right, let's go watch some football. Let's go. Later, boys. Signing out.